Welcome to the Replenish Me radio show. My name is Cordelia Kafar, and I'm the stressless mom of six, helping women get from the chaos of wanting to be healthy to the calm of actually doing it. As the host of the show, I get to interview amazing women like my guest today, Tiffany Simpson Crumpley, to give women strategies um, to be successful. Now, Tiffany is, she serves as the Director of Network Development and Technical Assistance, um, as a Technical Assistance Specialist for Access Health South Carolina. In this capacity, she provides technical assistance to the statewide rural health networks and access health medical home placement programs for the uninsured. Prior to joining South Carolina Office of Rural Health, she served as the Assistant Director of the Mecklenburg County System of Care, an initiative that supports multidisciplinary co collaboration to support families and youth struggling with mental health conditions. She holds dual bachelor's degrees in health science and African American studies from San Jose State University, and she received her master's in health services administration from St. Mary's College in California. Welcome to the show, Tiffany. Thank you. You are so um, accomplished, mashallah, and you have so many things to offer. So now you've taken all of your background and you've started your own consulting company. Is that right? Yes. So I am still working with South Carolina Office of Rural Health. Um, I was blessed to be able to flip from an employee to them becoming my client. So I do project management for them. And the name of my consulting practice is NIA Unlimited Consulting Services. And NIA is um, a Swahili word that means purpose unlimited. And so, um, so it allows me to explore um, my gifts in terms of training and facilitation um, for health and human service organizations um, and with a mission to improve um, the condition of communities and helping individuals and organizations achieve that goal. That's really amazing. So I, I like that you're a mother um, and you've taken your, your education, your gifts, and you didn't put that on the back burner. You continued and you even figured out a way to um, make your employee position into like, you know, you flipped it into your own consulting. So that's awesome. But what I want to dig into today, Tiffany, is I noticed that um, for 30 days over the summer, you decided to do this fitness uh, challenge. And it was like, I think you were inspired by somebody else, but you carried it on outside of the days of that actual challenge. So tell me all about that. Tell us about it. Well, so um, mid-July through uh, August, I want to say, um, my cousin, uh, who's in Oakland, California, decided to do, was, was doing a fitness challenge, and she really inspired me because I had never seen her so focused um, before, and so it was almost like, look, if she can do it, I can do it too, and also from this real place of needing to take better care of myself, so I work from home and the thought was, oh, since I work from home, I'm going to be, you know, running around the neighborhood every day, hitting the gym, and I'm going to be a size six because I'm at home and I got control over my time now. Well, guess what? Tiffany was working from home and snacking on everything under the sun and the hips were starting to spread. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I really believe in being a reflection of my work and so I don't want the two to be incongruent so my life has been dedicated to addressing um, health disparities in low-income communities of color where obesity is rampant hypertension is rampant diabetes is rampant and even though I work for myself now how can I advocate for communities to take better care of themselves through my work if I'm not a reflection of that I don't need to be perfect but I also need to be a reflection of what I say I believe in and also to better manage my stress as a mom. Um, the biggest misconception is working from home is like a cakewalk. And so I was beginning to stress about 
you know, balancing business and the responsibilities to my children. And so um, I wasn't scheduling lunches for myself. I was just kind of grabbing and eating, not eating um, small meals. I was eating one big meal and sometimes it wasn't the most nutritious meal. So long story short, I said, look, I need to stop playing. And I did really technically like a 33 day challenge because I went about almost 18 days straight working out and I would do Facebook lives from wherever I was, whatever time it was. And that's how we cross paths, Cordelia, is that you offer to be my accountability partner. Right. And so my goal was always to try to get my workout in before you went into my inbox. And sometimes I didn't have my workout done and I would have to say to you like, look, it might be about 11 o'clock before I get it done, but I'm going to get it done. And so it took me, I went about 18 days straight working out consistently. Now, what happens to the body when you shock it like that? It shuts down. So I began to experience back pain and knee pain because I wasn't giving myself any break. And any person that knows anything about working out knows that you should take off one day a week. Mm -hmm. So for the remaining 14, 15 days, I did six days on and one day off, which is really the recommendation. And so prior to that, I was doing about two to three days here and there and not being consistent. So what that 33 day challenge did for me was get my body in the mode of moving every day. Sometimes my workouts would be at the gym. Sometimes I would do it at 11 o'clock. And you know this, Cordelia, because I would do Facebook Lives at like 11 o'clock at night. One night it was like lightning outside. And I'm like, Dad, gum it, I'm going to get my workout in. And so, um, so that was just the description. But really, it, it, it was my gift to me. Um, and it wasn't a perfect process. But what it has done for me now has really made me commit to at least 30 to 45 minutes a day of working out. Um, now that school has started, um, it's like four to six days a week. So like this week, I've gotten four days in, but that's because it's a mid-fall break and my kids are with me. And so it's been a challenge to try to work in educational activities, working from home, and getting my workout in. So once they're back in school, I'll be back to my five or six. So I know that was a long explanation of the 30 day, 33 day challenge that I did for, uh, did for me. Um, and that's really it in a nutshell. And so now I am working on being better with my eating. And so that, that's really the focus of going into October, which I turned 43 on October 2nd. So um, really focusing the month of October of putting more healthy things in my temple. Wow, so that you brought up so many great things there. So you want to first and foremost, be a role model for what you do in your business, right? And yes in your life then you made it a priority and you stuck to it but you recognize right that your body was going through a shock and how unrealistic you were setting yourself up pretty much for failure right so you're like whoa uh reset like i'm i'm smarter than this and you listen to your body that's the other point i like that you brought out you listen to your body when you have that back pain when you have any kind of pain that is your alert, your alarm system going up saying, um, yes, we are a movement machine. However, <laughs> if you don't sit your butt down somewhere, I'm going to show you who I am in just a minute and you will be down for the count for more than a day. How about that? Yes. Yes. And then I like the new focus. See a lot of people when they go from not taking care of themselves to taking care of themselves, they like shock their bodies. Like you said, and they're going at it with the workout, the crazy workout schedule and the like new um, food schedule, like introducing new foods. That's way too much. But you were <laughs> super smart with that. You were like, OK, I'm going to get the get into the groove of this exercise things. July, August, September. Right. Mm -hmm. Pay attention, listeners and viewers, because when I work with my clients, a lot of them are, you know, all like okay, I need a meal plan, I need an exercise plan, and in 90 days, I'm going to be like, you know, and I'm just like, well, 
I'm here to tell you that your body has gotten accustomed to your habits for the past how many years? And you cannot jolt it back into shape like that. So, you know, pick, let's pick something that you can manage and get into that. And I like how you found that for yourself. And then next step, okay, now I'm really good and I have a foundation with this exercise. Now I'm gonna work on my eating. And that is, and your, your mindset is, that's your gift to you for your birthday. So congratulations for that. And so I, I love it. I really love that. So huh, I wanna get more into what is your plan with your food? I know I gave you a set of <laughs> I'm going to have to veer off now. <laughs> uh, what had happened was, okay, so one of the things that I learned about myself, and this is who I've always been, so just a couple of disclaimers. So I've really, I've always been pretty active. Um, I am a dancer, so that is my first love. So when I started um, working out, I really weighted my workouts on dance fitness workouts and high intensity interval training and running. Those are like my three things that I love to do. But I'm gonna, admittedly, I am the type of person that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna work it, I'll eat whatever I want and I'll work it back off. But see, when your hormones change and you over 40, your body's like, mm -mm, no, you can work out all you want to and that scale is not gonna move, how about that? And so really over that entire process, I only lost about five pounds because I wasn't, I wasn't disciplined with my eating. So for me, I don't function in extremes. What I know about my body is that it functions well on lean proteins, whether they're veggie-based or animal-based, and vegetables. My body just holds on to carbs, like that. Like I can just look at rice and potato and my butt gets big. So, so really what I had to do was be real with myself. Um, and I rejoined that weight loss program where you go to the meetings and such and you all know what I'm talking about Oprah is the spokesperson for it and the why of that is I needed that in-person accountability I had my fitness pal on the phone I was half ass oh I'm sorry I'm cussing <laughs> I was half ass tracking and so those little ca those calories add up that snacking adds up and so what you think is a 1200 calorie day could have easily been like 1800 to 2000 calories and you haven't burned any of that off and so I recently joined them the second week of September because I just had to be real with myself and realize that I wasn't disciplined. So um, I'm go I'm gonna go in. We had Hurricane Irma that threw me off. So this week I'm reactivated with tracking. I'll go to meetings on Saturdays, and so really with that plan, the way it's structured now, you know that program has been around since the 1960s. Um, they really almost emphasize the way you need to be eating. So low in saturated fat, lean proteins, um, you know, unlimited vegetables. Um, with, veg with fruits, you just need to watch the sugar content of your fruits. But by and large, it kind of forces you into eating more healthy. And so me weighing in every Saturday, I'm just going to be real, like, like if my weigh-in day is Saturday and I've been messing up, snacking, doing stuff I don't have no business, by Wednesday, I'm like, mm-mm, I'm not looking crazy at the scale. I'm going to get my life together. And so that is how I function. And so I guess that would be, um, even though we're not at takeaways yet, is that you really need to be real with yourself and what works for you and for me i need that in-person accountability and cordelia you were the bomb partner but you have your own family you have six kids you have a business you're trying to run a household and a business at the same time it was unrealistic for me to feel like okay i'm gonna depend on one person who's just as busy if not busier than me to hold me accountable so guess what if i have to pay for the service that's what i'm gonna do to make sure i'm doing what i need to do so that's really what i'm doing around my eating is I joined a formalized program and a, a structure where I have to show up in front of people and weigh in. 
Yes. Does that answer your question? I love that answer because, you know, a lot of times, you know, I'm in the online space and I have online courses and work with people all over the world. But there are some people like I talked to a woman yesterday in California and she's like, you know, I love what you do. She's part of my sisterhood, which is one of my online programs. She says, but you know what? I think I would, you know, benefit better from one of your programs if I could come and meet you face to face weekly. You know, they're just people like that. And I'm like, that's totally cool. She says, but I do, you know, with that said, I like being in your community because that does help me and, you know, keep me accountable. But I just, you know, there's nothing like being, you know, face to face with someone. And I want to just bring up a point about the scale. And I talk about this in my book is it's, it's actually um, one of my actually several of my clients kept asking me about the scale and BMI and all that. So I made a chapter in my latest book and with the high intensity stuff that you were doing, probably you didn't see that scale moving too much, not only because of your food choices, but because of your muscle gain, you know, cause muscle weighs more than fat. So, um, and, and also with women, we lose weight slower. So these are some things that we really shouldn't beat ourselves up about, but knowing your body and, and having that, you know, having a version of accountability that works for you, that is what is truly super duper important. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, you totally answered my question. And I love how you're helping me bring out all these good points because these are things that people don't think about. You know, they just, they want the results. They want the results now. And the other thing that you brought up is the program that you are in is from the 1960s. And a lot of the research regarding nutrition has changed a lot. So some of the recommendations, you even recognize that they're not, you know, the best recommendations. And ultimately, you know what you should be eating, but it's a good um, starting point to pay attention. Right. And I think, you know, there's a million programs online. And another reason why I chose that program is when I was in grad school in my mid 20s, this is pre marriage, pre kids, like that was the only program that worked for me. And, and really, and at that time, you know, now it's uh, tracking on your phone. I used to literally write down everything I ate. Now, it took me about seven months, but I dropped about 30 pounds with them. And so I was able to keep it off until I got married. <laughs> Kids. So go, go figure. So to me, you you go back to what works for you um, as far. And, and one thing I do like about that program is that they morph with the latest research. So now I've talked about the weighing in and I think that's the first part of the accountability, but they also encourage you to do inches. And that's something that I haven't done yet. I haven't measured um, to track, you know, my clothes are fitting better. Most, most of the folks that have seen me since I've done the challenge and I'm continuing to work out have said that my midsection has gone down, but that hasn't translated to any more drops on the scale. And I think sometimes we get really caught caught up with that. And so that's just a, a self checking for me that I need to be monitoring inches um, and the scale. Um, and even in terms of the BMI, I don't, I think that's a good baseline to have, but what, and you may be able to verify this Cordelia that um, different body types, different women of different cultures were not factored into the, the clinical research around that. And so, and I know that at five feet tall, I carry a lot of muscle mass. Um, even when I was in shape in high school, I was dancing. Um, even through the first couple of years of college, I was dancing, I was active, but a size six for me could be upwards of 135 pounds, but I was in shape and that was like 10 pounds over the BMI of what it said I should weigh. So I really, you know, the scale is one part of the accountability, but also the idea that other women are working on the same goals as you and talking about, and we haven't gotten to this yet, but really the importance of balancing your life with your your wellness goals and I really want to kind of get past the weight loss because that's like um, icing on the cake what I have noticed is that 
with me working out on a consistent basis. I have a lot more patience with my kids. Um, I'm not the most chill mom for lack of a better way to say it. So I noticed like when I would work, when I would work out, I had a lot more patience and resolve to deal with them just being kids instead of being a yelling, screaming banshee around the house, which is my MO. And so um, they noticed it. And I think it's important um, as you're changing your eating habits, being active. If you want your kids to adopt a healthy, healthy lifestyle, they copy what they see, not what you say. Mm-hmm. And so there were definitely opportunities where it drove me crazy when my four year old was picking up a three pound weight while I'm trying to do a workout. And I'm like, if you don't get out of my way. <laughs> so because I was afraid I would kick him or something. And so but I'm, but they're already being programmed that this is the way you take care of your body. And so I move in phases. I like to focus on one thing at a time. And so the working out consistently was one piece. Now the eating for me, and see, women are the nucleus of their households. They're the center of their household. So they set the tone for everybody else. So the next kind of wave of that is the healthy eating habits. And my family doesn't eat horrible, but I just think that we can, I could do better in terms of meal planning and preparation. So the next wave after I get Tiffany together is to introduce recipes um, that are healthy. So we're at a point where we're eating pretty clean four to six days a week. And then we kind of freestyle one day on the weekends. Cause that's usually when we tend to eat out. Yep. So I know I did a whole lot of talking, but I just wanted to kind of, you know, talk about kind of the underlying benefits of the challenge. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, thank you for that. Because, and you brought up all the things that I would want to pull out anyway. So no, And I love how you're saying that now that you started exercising, that you're no longer, I call it monster mom. (laughs) So um, that that's one of the things, you know, we, a lot of times it's harder for us to deal with stressful situations. And sometimes we perceive things that are not even stressful as stressful situations when we are not getting the proper movement and exercise and circulation that we should have. So that's a good point and oh yes i know with my crew that um they definitely will do what they see you do not what you tell them to do so um what is it that i do for example i if i want them to clean up and i just go and i start cleaning up and it's amazing how many people fall into line i could scream and yell all day clean up not happening not happening so you're so right about that um yes let's talk more about balancing your self-care your family and your business and how how did how did you overcome those challenges and what would you share um well let me first just say that i haven't overcome it's a work in progress that's number one two so here's the here's some of the stuff that came out during the challenge. Now my husband was a champ, you know, because and 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 I'm kind of like like when I focus, it's like balls to the wall, and I kind of get this tunnel vision. And so I wasn't really good with meal planning. Like some of the meals were just like suspect. And he like he's like, babe, I don't mind supporting you, but babe, like, what is this that you pull it together? Like, I need you to be more planful because, see, in our situation, my husband is a full time student. He's finishing up. Um, Uh, his social work degree as we speak. So he, um, I live in the Atlanta metro area. So we live, we live in a suburb and he's in the city um, most of the day. And so it's really on me to have things ready. And I didn't always do good. Now I got my workouts in, but sometimes it was like whatever was on in the pantry that I could throw together and not being planned for around it. And sometimes I was woefully inadequate. (laughs) So, so here that, and so that's, here's one thing to hold on to is as we make ourselves a priority, we have to look at what that means for our day. Mm -hmm. So one of the aha moments is that by the lunch hour, I'd either need to have something in the crock pot. I mean, y'all think, like having meat thawed out like you don't even think about those things because you're so busy like i gotta get my workout in but 
what is your family going to have for dinner? <laughs> it ain't no meat thawed out. So there were times where I was literally having to get a rotisserie chicken and steam some vegetables and some rice in a pack, which is not the best thing in the world, but it was like a balanced meal. And so that was like kind of like the underside is that, okay, how do I plan my day where my family's needs are met and my needs are met? And it was kind of lopsided during the process. And I had to be accountable for that with my partner. Um, and he was great about watching the kids in the evenings. But then towards the end of the challenge, he was like, you know what? He's like, I need to get back in the gym. And when, when me and my husband were courting, he was a bodybuilder. Like he was one of those dudes that didn't have no neck, like that type of bodybuilder. And so it just kind of was like a wake up call for him in terms of his, his sometimes challenges around dealing with stress around school. He's like, I need to be doing this so I can kind of be more calm and for health reasons too. And so that was also kind of like the upside. So it was some things that did not go so well. Um, now it's like really like as business owners, we're encouraged to have our wonderful to-do list. Well, guess what? You got to put your household on a to-do list. Because I could tell you right now, everything that's listed here is work. Hmm. Mm. So that's what I mean by you have to, you know, plan for it like the night before. Like a, a, a standard best practice for entrepreneurs is the night before you kind of map out your battle plan for the day. Well, guess what? You got to do that too. It's almost like you have your business to-do list and your household to-do list. Yeah. And so and so that and so it's like and and that's really where I am now is trying to figure that out. That I don't forget to say, hey Tiffany, by that and I'm Muslim, so we have five daily prayers. And I'm like, you know what? In order for things to go right, I need to have dinner on no later than like between the, the early afternoon and the late afternoon prayer, that, that magic window between one and four o'clock. I need and really in the middle, like more towards the first prayer, afternoon prayer to make sure that either I got meat thawed out, that I can do a quick stir fry or I have something in a crock pot no later than that first afternoon prayer. And so those were kind of like things I discovered about myself. This is something that you told me too. Um, I struggle with morning workouts, but as moms, I think if we can get it done on the front end of the day, to me, that's a best practice because you're not competing with everything else. You're not competing with your work schedule. You're not competing with the kids coming home from school. You've got up at dark 30 in the morning and just knocked it out. And because what was happening was I was working out at 10, 30, 11 o'clock and my system would be amped up so tough that I would have trouble falling asleep which kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, yeah. Um, what had happened was, that's my answer to how to actually the work life balance. I just, it's still a work in progress. And anybody that knows me, I'm a creative type, which means I can be a disorganized and procrastin lean towards procrastination at times. So, so a lot of it is this is also forcing me to look at myself and say, like, Tiffany, what do you need to do to structure your day better? Because it's not just about your working out. It's about your overall productivity. So went around the world to go around the corner, but really it's a work in progress. I'm still trying to figure that out. And one of those things is um, these to-do lists, is having, like, a household to-do list, um, and a work to do list and, and they're in front of you. And, and the funny thing, even with procrastinators like me, it's like when that to do list is looming in front of you, you're like, I got to get this done. Or I'm good. I'm going to be, I'm going to fail at my battle plan today. So, um, so that, so that's just a practical strategy that I'd like to offer. It may not work for everybody, but it's something about writing and seeing those check boxes and, and them unchecked boxes is like okay sis you got to get your life together what do you need to do to get this box checked yes good great point so the to-do list thing right so we love our devices we love our phones but i'm gonna tell you what 
put in the to-do list and the phone can be the death of you. Yes. So yeah, I, it may be a generational thing. Maybe we're just old, but nothing like writing it with your hand and having it pasted in front of you absolutely helps. And that, and I like the fact that you're, um, you are okay with your work in progress. You're trying, you're doing it every day. That's all you can do, right? Mm -hmm. I, I really like that you're encouraging, you know, look, it's a work in progress. I haven't overcome and I'm still trying. So yes, that's beautiful. I love that. Um, now, what I want to say is how I feel about balance. We're all seeking balance, but I used to have a blog called Living in Harmony Motherhood. And I think what you actually pulled out and all of your talking is that you're harmonizing your life. Really. So you're, you're finding the harmony in um, and, and knowing, recognizing that, you know, you've got, you know, prayers that you've got to do at certain times of day. You've found that you're more efficient with getting meals on the table if certain, um, benchmarks have been met at certain times in between certain prayers. So, um, and you're not having to compete with other things. So yeah, I love that. Um, let's see. One thing I want to ask you is now you, you brought up that your job is helping people. Can you hear me? Well, yeah, I can, no, I'm listening. I can hear you just fine. Um, your job is helping people um, in lower income brackets to um, that that have issues with diabetes and those kind of things. Now, do you have any uh, genetic um, health issues in your family? Um, well, as um, an African American, it's well documented that um, we are adversely impacted more so than the general population with obesity, which is a root cause of hypertension, diabetes, um, even clinical linkages to your risk for um, developing cancer, really directly related to the diet and the foods and the sedentary lifestyle. So in my family, um, definitely hypertension. Um, my father was 46 when he passed away. He passed away of congestive heart failure. Now, a lot of it was lifestyle issues with him, but he was a smoker. Um, my, I have, you know, it's a long story, but um, I, I was raised by my stepmom and I have um, my biological mom. Both of them have, both of them struggle with diabetes. My um, stepmother passed away of cancer at like 62 years old. Um, and my birth mom still struggles with um, heart failure, you know, congestive heart failure, um, and she's contending with that as we speak. And so um, definitely some genetic markers in the family, but I don't claim that. I think, and, and, and this is where I really have to kind of um, be reflective in terms of our community and how we view things. Sometimes it's more important for us to, you know, eat whatever we want to eat and just deal with the consequences afterwards. And I'm just not real big on that as a cultural norm. Like I think we can have our soul food, but it's not every day. To me, I, it's worth it to me to be a great grandmother and be healthy enough um, and make some sacrifices and eat clean. And I eat that good soul food every so blue moon and I can still maintain my culture and be healthy at the same time. And so, um, so those, I contend with it within our, in my family, um, but also just in terms of the cultural norms around socializing around food and our history of how we prepare our food and the why of that. And that's always going to kind of be an uphill battle. So um, that's important in this process as well. It's learning how to fix our food differently with different ingredients and, and not have such a damaging impact in terms of our risk for chronic disease. I like that you were talking about maintaining your culture and, you know, and eating right. So one of the things that I like to, to bring to the forefront is, you know, a lot of times we're brainwashed to believe that healthy eating is bland uh, cooking. And it's not because most healthy foods, like 
a lot of our soul food is good for your body too if we just don't amp it up the way we do right so um like the seasonings and the spices and the herbs are there um just if we change the quantities of some of the ingredients you know it can be really really good for you and a lot of um you know because i i work with all women but i tend to work more with uh women from ethnic backgrounds you know whether they're muslim or african-american and that's always what they're saying they're like oh you know i can't i can't eat healthy because i'm you know bengali or i'm somali or whatever i'm like well as it turns out you know um these spices are really good for you and there's a way to make the food more healthy so I'm glad that you're on a mission to try and find that out for yourself and maintaining your culture, you know, because it's not sustainable if you're adapting something else, right? You're right. not going to be able to make it to, you're not going to enjoy it and your kids are going to see that you're not enjoying it, right? You're right. like, got to eat this, you know, crappy food so I can stay healthy. Why can't you eat your good, delicious, yummy food and be healthy? Right. And I think, you know, just simple things like, you know, a standard seasoning in African American households is lorries. Like, you're not black unless you got lorries in your seasoning cavity. I mean, I'm just keep it real. But a lot of times we can make our own spice blends that are cleaner out of kosher salt, fresh cracked pepper. We get the same ingredients, but we make our own spice blends and we take all that processed stuff that out. And see, these are things that I've learned along the way. And honestly, the program that I joined um, really was my introduction to eating new foods. Um, things like lettuce wraps, like I like to do that as quick, as easy to put together. And one day I was sitting at the table and my four-year-old was like, well, mommy, can I have some too? And he was sitting there eating a lettuce wrap with fresh mango sauce or avocado and ground turkey with taco, even taco seasoning. Like I, I love Mexican food. The, the, the taco seasoning that you get in your in, in those packets, you can make yourself and just keep it on hand. And I, and, and, and I think I've even began to make my own salad dressings. Mm -hmm. um, I do the cheat bottle, so I know how much <laughs> or oil to vinegar. But these are just things that I've learned over time. And again, you have to do what works for you. But what I don't want to happen is a catastrophic health event. And often, for not just African-American women, but women of color, our self-worth is measured by how well we take care of our families. And sometimes we could be feeding our families the best foods in the world and we're not giving ourselves the same thing. I don't want a mini stroke to have to be the negative motivation for me to get my mess together um, or, you know, being too overweight and my knees hurting and being winded because I haven't stayed active. I just don't want to wait for that. Um, one of the biggest things that I struggle with is that my, my kids only have two living grandparents, mm. two, and no great grandparents. And I think that it's very important from a family structure perspective that we have to keep ourselves healthy because that intergenerational relationship is so important to the quality of our lives. I want to be looking at my great grandchild. I want to have that picture of four generations of my family um, in that picture. And in order to do that, and when you talk to women who have aged 80, 90 years, nine times out of 10, they're not eating a lot of meat. They're not eating a lot of processed foods. Um, they, they've grown their own food. They drink lots of water. They don't smoke. They don't drink. And so it's like we know what we need to do. It's just we have to practice it and not be hard on ourselves. So I know I said a lot. It's my soapbox, but it's just it's just necessary. You know, like I said, weight loss is the, the um, icing on the cake. Um, the importance of your ability to handle stress and mitigate cortisol, which we know tends to lend to weight in your midsection. It can make you have a baby too fast. Well, guess what? When you work out, it brings down that stress hormone. 
And so a lot of our health issues as African-Americans can be directly linked back to our hormonal imbalances and the increased levels of cortisols in our system from systemic and ongoing stress in our lives. And it's like working out is the most underutilized antidepressant. So instead of drinking or smoking a blunt, I'm going to just keep it real. Like, this is how people manage stress. So they eat too much. It's like, okay, when you're upset, instead of eating a pint of ice cream, go run, run around your house, jump around, and you'll feel much better after 20 minutes in. Yeah. So I know that, I've, you know, I do, these things I'm really passionate about, and we have to meet people where they are. Yeah. It's unrealistic to say that I'm going to give up fried chicken forever. It ain't happening. But I know that I can't have it every day, you know? And so and it's don't to me. Peanut oil, okay? You can use coconut oil to make it. Or avocado. Right. I'm still trying to do the oven baked fried chicken. No, I'm not can... sold on it. <laughs> I'm not sold on it yet. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. But um, I just really appreciate the opportunity to just share my journey with folks. I'm really big on sharing the good, bad, and ugly of self-care and the process that you have to go through and the blips along the way, but we're, um, we're works in progress. And so I had to kind of give up being perfect and realize that it didn't take me two days to gain 30 pounds and it's not gonna, and I'm not gonna drop that weight in two days or 30 days. It's like, this is a process. Darling, I'm doing something right now. I will do that. And then things like this, my four-year-old needing water is a bit yeah. of an interview. Okay, yeah. baby, I'm almost done. No, go back to your room, sweetheart. That's okay. It happens. You know, I'm surprised my little co-hosts haven't shown up. They, they showed up from my earlier interview today, so it happens. But can we talk about what it took to do this interview today? <laughs> Let's just be real. In, you know, full disclosure, we, what, it took us 45 minutes to get it together, I think, like an hour or something, because we were supposed to do this. Yeah, I feel like it took us a good almost hour to get it together. Yeah, because our kids were like, I need you. My yes. kids, like, she was cool, but all of a sudden she was like, Mom, I just want you to be next to me. And I'm like, to do what? And she's like, just to be here and then she was like just holding my hand no and then it was like what i did you like okay look i haven't made my bed yet your daughter's like right in the camera my son is coming out asking for oreos for for lunch i'm like no and we talked about this and see that's the thing you know your kids like we had this whole kind of conversation like mommy's gonna be interviewed today this is what's gonna happen get your snacks and even right before this so i just say that to say we need to be um gentle on ourselves unless you are blessed with the opportunity to hire a nanny power to you sister but the vast majority of women in america <laughs> with this economy like it is it is it, it's difficult to hire and hire you know help you know and sometimes my and my husband gonna tell you the laundry might be done but it might be sitting on the couch for about three and a half days before it get folded and put away <gasps> Like sometimes, you know, I mean, I, you know, now my kitchen is clean, my bathroom is clean, but laundry is the enemy. And if that was one thing, if there's one thing that I would pay somebody to do, it would be coming here and organize these drawers and, and wash and put away clothes. But he's been wonderful in terms of washing the clothes. I just have to get myself together as his partner and follow through <laughs> on my part of the deal. So, so I just, and, and so I, I think it's important for us to kind of share what our process was because the best laid plans of my I man, we were scheduled at 11 o'clock, but look, we still got it done. And I guess that's, you know, you talked about three takeaways and it's like, don't let perfection be the enemy of progress. Like, you know, as much as we think that things can't happen, I'm like, oh my God, I'm letting Sister Cordelia down. I don't have it together, you know. <laughs> and then you're looking at me like, look, I, 
I talk to my baby, but she's not trying to cooperate right now. So I just, I think we, and, and we're, and that doesn't take away from the awesomeness of who we are as women being human. Yeah. Who we are as business owners, the whole kind of misconception that working at home um, or even staying at home and trying to coordinate all these things like, you know, even without having businesses from home, I know my girlfriends that are stay at home moms, they're struggling with the same thing. And that's why your work is so important, Sister Cordelia, because you've broken it down into digestible chunks. And, and I watch you and, you know, just because we were having a challenge today does not take away from the accomplished businesswoman and wife and mother that you are. We just gonna have some unfolded laundry and that's just gonna be what it is, right? Maybe the bed won't get made today, but that's okay. <laughs> now, wait a minute. And see, every woman is different. See, that was the first chore that I learned as a kid. Like, okay, see, we both in the, in the 40 some. that was the first thing that I learned how to do was making beds and hospital corners. You know about them hospital corners? Yeah, I do. My dad was like an officer in the military, so. And my, and my dad was in the army too. Um, and so when you, and, and I was listening to David Goggins. He's like a ultra athlete, has done like 67,000 pull-ups. He's just a Navy SEAL. One of the things he said in terms of the start of your day, and I heard another guy that's a high-ranking Naval officer say the same thing, is to make your bed. Who I knew? Know. Yeah, I know what that's about, yeah. And so, and it's like for me, and, 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 and laundry causes me so much stress, but everybody has their thing. And so, and then the other piece too that I didn't even talk about is not letting myself down. Like every morning, and I shared this with you, Cordelia, is that I have a vision board that's literally thumbtacked on the wall. Uh, and, and so when I get up in the morning, I have no other choice to look at it. So it is a visual reminder. Now, everybody's not real big on vision boards. I'm like, you need to write it down on paper or you need to have a picture of it. But basically, you need to be looking at who you want to be and having a reminder of that. So I got this cut up beautiful sister color and i'm like mm -mm, you not winning today heifer i'm gonna beat you you know I, look like look and i'm looking at wanting to be debt free by 47 which is four years from now look i gotta have my day together so i can make these coins so i can work to my highest level of productivity and create creativity to burn that debt and so we have to have visual reminders of who we are and what we stand for. And so whether you choose to write that on flip chart paper or you have a vision board, so, and that, and being fit was a part of my vision board. Drinking green smoothies, that's another thing that I worked in. Even if I'm not, even if I eat a burger, I try to have a green smoothie every day. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's like you're, you're finding the balance. And so a, the green smoothie is on my vision board. That girl with the kettlebell in her hand is on my vision board. And my goal is to eventually replace her picture with my picture. All right, I love that. Yeah. I love that you led with being perfectly imperfect because that is our downfall, right? That's our downfall. It starts right there. We're just like, I didn't make my bet. Oh, I'm going to tell you, let's see. It's probably been about 13 years since I stressed about that. <laughs> no, and see, and you, and, and you, and you're what, and you have, see, and that's the other piece as women, I used to really find myself being envious of who, what I call super moms, like who just managed to have it all together. They hair done, they nails done, they scarf is perfectly pinned, they house clean, they growing stuff and they, I've decided that they ain't real. <laughs> No, but no, some women come into this world just being very highly organized as moms, but we have gifts for one another. Your strengths are my weaknesses and vice versa. That's just something that was instilled in me from the very beginning. But I know that with each day that the creator gives us, we have an opportunity to be a better human being than we were 
the day before. And I guess just to, you know, wrap this up in a neat package, that's what that 30 day challenge was about, was really 33 days, um, was to really push myself and really say like, nah, I didn't go 30 days straight. I just kept going. Because really, the challenges don't stop. And that's the biggest misconception about these challenges that we have. It's just a way to really put your back up against the wall to create a new life habit. It, it's, not, it's not a stopping point. And so I guess that's what's most important in all of this is that we challenge ourselves each day to be better than the day before. So with that, we're going to clearly close out with the three takeaways. Oh, what? Well, look, let's see if uh, you caught some, but number one. No, I, I heard them, but I just want them because we've talked a lot and mm -hmm. I feel like we, we bring out the takeaways and then we like blossom them a little bit. So I want to just end so that when people are, you know, if they were, if they got lost in our stories along the way, they can just write it down again and make sure that they're checking that off. So just. One more time, sister. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can remember. I think um, number one is um, be realistic about your goal and create a system that works for you. Um, have an accountability partner or a program or both. Um, two, definitely put yourself on your to-do list. Now, this I'm, I'm showing this because I literally found this the other day. I used to really make these on my own, literally drawing check boxes. This was like a dollar at Target. And <laughs> no, I'm serious. And so the night before, just plot. And I wouldn't, and that long to-do list, I've been working on that to-do list all week. So that's another caveat. I try not to, um, whether it's the household or work stuff, go over three. I find that it's very difficult to achieve more than that in a given day given everything else that you have um and i guess um the the takeaway is keep going um so and, and focus so if, if you're doing a 30-day challenge focus on one thing for me for that 30 to 33 days it was working out then i'm like okay i got the workout down now i'm gonna bring the other building block of eating right and I had to employ a formalized program to get that done. And don't be ashamed to do that. Um, and so that was the other piece. And then the third part of it is you reflect that in your family and planning your day to manage your household better. And so that's where that to-do list comes in is making sure like by a certain time you have your meat thawed or you have something in the crock pot. I use my daily prayers. Um, around that you know as a gauge but maybe now talking about phone reminders now i don't do to-do lists on uh reminders but i put my favorite workout classes so i don't miss them even though i know when they are i set them on my calendar just like i do any other appointment so if my, i like trap spin class so it's tuesdays and thursdays i put that on my phone we should be eating every two and a half to three hours. I have seven, 10, one o'clock, four o'clock. So I know you asked for three takeaways, but I just want to, you know, make sure that your viewers have some practical tools that they can use. And so I do use my phone for reminders. Um, and then, uh, it, and it kind of just syncs up really nicely because when I need to eat at one o'clock, I should be putting something in a crock pot or I should be throwing out some type of protein because I can throw together the sides very quickly. So those are your takeaways. Thank you. It's, it's not rocket science. That's basically what you're saying. So just listen to um, do, do what Tiffany says and be perfectly imperfect. And yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And thank you so much for extending the opportunity. Um, I don't know, Cordelia, are you going to share... Um, contact information or do i need to share that with the audience right so the links will be below the video and um below the the radio show link but mm -hmm. yes if you have any upcoming events let us know and where can we find you 
um, upcoming events. So I um, weaved a little bit um, of my story into this because we are all the sum of our experiences. I have been working on a book for uh, the last year and my goal is to release it in winter um, of this year. So probably mid-December. So finishing up that um, is the Bounce Back Manifesto, Seven Strategies for Overcoming Trauma to Achieve Success. So that's coming down the pike. Um, what other events do I have? I typically do like an annual vision board session or retreat that will be here in Atlanta, Georgia. That'll probably be right around the December slash January time when we're making our goals. And how can you find me? Um, I, my Facebook page is Nia Unlimited Consulting Services. So you can inbox me. Um, there's links where you can schedule a time to speak with me, learn more about my story, or even around this process, because this is definitely a part of my life. And um, my website is Nia Unlimited dot lpages dot co um so and that's my landing page where you can get in contact with me um we talked about goal setting and really talking about what you need to do to achieve things like a 30-day challenge there is a free planning sheet where you can kind of jot down your goals and figure out where you need to balance your life to achieve those goals. So you, those links will be provided by Sister Cordelia. But um, thanks so much for the opportunity to share my my lovely, imperfectly perfect 33-day challenge. I love it. I love it. I love you, sis. You are so amazing. And I just, um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful to know you. So, and I, I thank you for taking the time, even though with all our struggles today, the extra time to, um, to be here for my listeners and viewers. So, salam alaikum and have an amazing day. Yeah, wa alaikum salama. You have a wonderful day as well. Thank you.